Hey, this is Camille with the Rig on Wheel show, and this is the first ever truck driver and recruitment show. Of course, I am your host, Camille E. Gaines, the CEO and founder of Rig on Wheels, uh, broker and recruitment services. And this is Robert Pearson, our favorite VP over there at MVT, Missoula Valley. We have you in Houston again, huh? So you're just going to move here, right? Uh, it feels like it. Hopefully uh, this time will be easier to get out of town. Though. Yeah, yeah, it took him about five days to get home. You know, Houston just kept flooding and flooding and flooding. And Oh, trust me, I, I was not too proud. I, I even checked <laughs> Amtrak and Greyhound. Yeah. yeah, it was bad. Last week was um, pretty bad, but... We are here and we're your ultimate destination when it comes to your truck driver industry news, insights, hot jobs. We definitely got some hot jobs for you um, and recruitment tips. So definitely stand by. We got a good show for you today, but we're going to start it off with um, some news. So uh, let's start with fuel. One of your favorite topics. Is yeah. Down. It's, yeah, it's going down. It's it's. It's going down. Yeah, five out of the last six weeks at 372. That's down 3.2 cents from the week before. Gas as well for those four wheelers out there is at 351 on average, down 6.1. So that's nice. Five out of six weeks we've been down. Even that week was more of a steadying ship of it. So that's exciting. So we're starting to see, and you'll talk a little bit about freight rates. Um, so we're seeing freight rates go in the right direction, fuel uh -huh. going in the opposite direction. Uh, of course, on the spot market, that's an all-in rate, so that's a really nice sign. Yeah, that's definitely the way we like to see it. Yeah. I mean, we are at the top of June, and I really wanted everything to go well for the second half of the year. I was like, we need to manifest this. But let's go back to diesel just for a second. We are still seven cents less, 7.1 cents less than it was last year. So that's we don't even think about how it was higher last year than it was this year. We always just think about, oh, it's just so high, high, high. But um, dry van is up four cents, so it's at two o five. Reefer is up three cents, so it's two forty three. And then flat is flat. <laughs> uh, all pun intended. I, I just wanted to say that two forty five. Getting excited from a dry van standpoint, it's about 4.5 loads per truck. If that uh, last week it was at 4.9, if that can start getting to where it's about five to one, we should see some progress uh, going into the remainder of the year here. Um, like we've talked about, uh, a lot of drivers have been taken off the road with the clearinghouse and aging out of the population during COVID. So we may be coming in some times that from an economic standpoint, it's not that significant overall, but in the world of trucking, uh -huh. supply and demand, there may be some opportunities that come out of it over the next several months. We're starting to see in a number of markets where um, when we start our day, we're already overbooked. And that's a beautiful word in trucking is being overbooked. Yeah, that that's really good. Very good. Now, did you have any other news for us? Yeah, we'll, we'll talk a couple things here. There's an interesting story on transport topics today uh, from Eric Miller over there. Trucking attorney need uh, trucking attorneys need to get aggressive. Experts say they had a gentleman, a lit litigation psychologist, which I don't know how you get that job, but that sounds cool. Uh, Bill Kansky, he talked about the fact that we need to get much more aggressive. It's not the person on the billboard that you need to worry about. They're looking for a quick payday. They want to settle. They want to move on. They are a problem, but there's a lot of these attorneys that want that massive payday that they got back in 2018 in a couple of cases of $100 million. One of the things that they talk about, though, is that the way our industry can protect ourselves because they point out us being witnesses is not going to win us a lot of cases. Often I witness if you have an accident and you talk to four different eyewitnesses, those four different eyewitnesses saw four different stories. 
-hmm. doesn't help. He also points out that uh, problem witnesses who are unable to answer difficult questions that plaintiff attorneys use to lead them down a dangerous path. These attorneys are professionals at guiding you to where they want you to go during the discovery phase. Uh, an ineffective witness testimony strategy when a trucking witness is argumentative and tries to win the deposition. It's not time for you to be Perry Mason, <laughs> an emotional witness who gets easily upset during questioning, or a witness who has cognitive breakdowns, meaning that they're not professional speakers. These are lawyers yeah. who practice for years on getting you to say what they want you to say, not what happened. So one of the things that we do at MVT, and we kind of talk it a little bit here, is those cameras become a big asset to us, not just us as a company, but you as a driver. And there's a couple things on that. When you have concrete evidence of, hey, here's videotaped uh -huh. evidence of what took place, that makes a huge difference and protects you on the road, combined with a number of other things. We hire drivers with really clean back backgrounds, good PSPs, uh, safety conscious professionals on the road. When you combine that with that actual video evidence, it makes a small legal issue stay a small legal issue instead of giving a trained attorney the opportunity to stick it to you. One of the things that we have is outward facing cameras. And then I always try to explain to people, not all inward facing cameras are the same. We have inward facing cameras, but they're literally AI. So mm -hmm. as, a, as an example, if you're driving for MVT is, I have no way to log in and take a look at you in the truck. Like I don't have any capabilities to do that whatsoever. No one in our company does. It's, it's literally AI. So if you hard braked, had a collision, a quick movement, it gets about 15 seconds of data. And to be honest, we have to go through the vendor to actually get that 15 second clip. So it's not something that we even have access to. We have to reach out to the provider, the actual vendor to get it. And there's some legal grounds that go through that. But I will tell you as a driver, God forbid, I hope you never run into this scenario, but if you're ever taken where an attorney's trying to stick it to you, that video evidence is much more valuable than any testimony you'll ever give in any trial. And that's the purpose of the lawyer is to stick it to you. Uh, they're absolutely. trying to win the case for their client. Oh, absolutely. And, and so the, the big thing for us here is if it's a he said, she said type of argument, we're mm -hmm. normally going to lose. Very few differently as professional drivers over the road. We do not get that uh, innocent until proven guilty in many cases, unfortunately. Right. So that video evidence becomes very, very important. And so it's one of the things that's interesting to see transport topics covering. And then, of course, we talked last week that the 30th, we were going to do our quarterly uh, driver uh, appreciation event, had massive turnout in all of our locations. We did it in our Hudson's yeah. Yard, Nashville, um, El Paso, Denver, mm -hmm. uh, really good attendance. And we have a gentleman uh, named Anthony Rios who ended up winning it. I don't have his MPGs yet. I'll have that next week. Anthony joined us a couple of years ago as a brand new driver out of El Paso, um, been with us ever since there about two years ago. So congratulations there. He got a brand new 20, 2023 Nissan Sentra. Um, so really nice car. And, and we always get excited for that giveaway. And it's, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about MPGs later on, obviously. Yeah. But it's always exciting to give a brand new car away. And uh, Royal Jones would have been pumped to do that. Yeah. I kind of want to talk about him a little bit because is this the guy that started out as a trainee? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he started out as a trainee in 2022. And so he's just over two years with MVT. So his entire journey after getting his CDL has been with MVT. Yep. Okay. So he's not a job hopper, obviously. No. <laughs> so he's a professional driver. His entire career um, of a little over two years has been with MVT and he's just won his car. Oh, yeah. That's pretty. And I, I will say good. primarily we look for experienced drivers, people with at least six months of experience. However, we do have opportunities for recent grads, either out of El Paso, Nashville, Dallas, Fort Worth or Laredo. Um, so there are opportunities if someone graduated from an, uh, uh, an accredited school in the last 12 months. Generally, we're getting experienced drivers. But like I point out with the MPG bonus, it is not always the 20 year vet mm -hmm. that's getting that award. Mm -hmm. Uh, three quarters ago, it was somebody that had been with us a total of nine, nine months, months. Yeah. Um, joined us from a country overseas, joined us as a, their first trucking job within the U.S. under a visa program. Um, and then in this case, this individual has been with us just two years. So it is not the 20 year vet. It's not one specific division. 
literally it's not luck that makes it happen. It mm -hmm. is a calculated approach to better fuel economy. They work with their fleet manager, a driver service department that deals with career development for our drivers, yeah. as well as other people in the company. Um, so a lot of opportunity there and Anthony definitely well-deserved. I like to just see, since we've been doing this podcast show, everybody that's been winning it's just been a diverse background. It's just not been one type of driver. That's what I'm noticing. It's yeah. just been different types of drivers. Yeah, I can't really point to, and this is one of the things with MVT, we don't really have a stereotypical driver, but if you look at our, the success of the ranks, be it our trainers mm -hmm. or what we call mentors, be it our, what I view as leaders, because there's definitely, mm -hmm. if we want to make a change and need to get feedback from a driver, we'll generally create a committee of anywhere between 12 to 15 drivers. And so we look for people that are successful, be it with MPG, performance, safety. There's not really one category that they'd fit into. One thing I can say that is a common they have always, they are all been professional drivers because that's the only drivers that can win this because they have to be committed to actually winning. Yeah. And, and I'll point out why, you know, 90% of the freight that we move is contracted freight. It is mm -hmm. literally customer, direct customer freight. The reason for that is we are not the cheapest carrier. We're not mm -hmm. in that game. We offer high levels of service, often 99% or better on time percentages. We have no categories above threshold on any of the seven CSA categories. If there is a common de common denominator, it'd be the professional of our driver base professionalism. Mm -hmm. I would put our driver base up against any carrier in the country. Yeah, that's pretty good. And congratulations, Anthony. That That's very good right there. Well, I mean, since we have been talking about MPGs, I think, Kayla, this is a good time. We can just kind of switch up the segments a little bit because this is a good time for you to play Carlos. Uh, commercial and then we come back and talk about MPGs a little bit so we can have a little bit of background on how Anthony actually did win uh, the car. Mi nombre es Carlos Vázquez. Tengo trabajando tres años aproximadamente y somos B1 y andamos en territorio de Estados Unidos. Lo que me gusta de MBT es que tiene buenos viajes, buenos camiones y Muy buenas millas. Mi comunicación con, con los despachos es muy buena y todo eso. Y siempre están a la orden del día. ¿Qué pienso del, del equipo de los camiones? Pues que están muy bien y les dan sus mantenimientos, sus tío y todo lo demás. Alineación y balanceo, todo cambio de llantas y excelente, excelente servicio. Y la compañía cada trimestre este, regala un auto me motiva pues a, a crecer más como persona y pues, para dar el, el 100 como dicen para la compañía welcome back everybody welcome back so Pearson tell us about like literally I know we don't have the stats on Anthony you'll have that next time when all of that comes out but tell us the overall how Anthony he was, was able to win. Well, I'm, I'm fairly confident he would have been in the 12.4 <laughs> yeah. to 12.8 range in terms of fuel economy, because that mm -hmm. tends to be where the leaderboard's been going here. Mm -hmm. And so in a world where once you get the equipment, once you get the customers, there's only two ways to save money in this industry. It's either through driver pay right. or it's through fuel economy. And fuel economy is the big name of the game, even when fuel is expensive, even when fuel is cheap. At the end of the day, what separates one company to another company is that fuel economy. Mm -hmm. And we take it extremely seriously between the type of equipment that the, we operate, how often the truck gets washed, when the PMs are done, where they fuel at, when they fuel. Uh, the biggest thing, though, tends to be driver behavioral patterns, how the truck is driven above anything else. So in an, indus in an industry that averages about 6.5 miles a gallon, we average about 9.5 miles a gallon. That makes a huge difference for a fleet of our size. That is approximately a $70 million annual savings, mm -hmm. um, that three miles per gallon difference. With that said, we want to reward drivers that are successful on the road and exceed any expectations that yeah. should realistically exist for them. So between the drivers and working with them to get better fuel economy, making sure that we're paying attention to the equipment and that's being well maintained, working with them on developing their career beyond just their driving career, but their long-term career with MVT, 
we work to get the best fuel economy possible. So as a driver, I'm able to see where I rank first my competition on the fleet. Mm -hmm. I literally can either see on my in cab communication or I can see on the wall when I go into any of the terminal. It's updated every Monday and I can see, oh, hey, Camille's number 84 this week on a fleet of 1500. Uh, I'm sitting at 79, so we'll have competition amongst ourselves mm -hmm. to see who's going to get the better fuel economy. And whoever wins for the quarter gets a brand new car. Uh, like I said, the quarterly seems to be in that 12.4 to 12.8 at this moment right now, but somebody's going to hit that 13 number within the next year, I guarantee it. Um, and then whoever gets the best fuel economy for the year gets $25,000. We've been doing that for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the foster child that I'd point to on that is a gentleman named Roberto Sandoval. Roberto's won it five times. So over the course of about a decade, he's given himself an extra $125,000 in revenue without running an extra mile. It is not who goes down the road the fastest. So when you see an 18-wheeler go by you at 75 miles an hour, mm -hmm. that person's generally the one that the last year has not been very pleasant. I promise you, between the safety issues, uh, I, I'm sure you've heard all the conspiracy theories. My truck sweet spots at 72. Right. Um, I, you got to get there quick. If I can just get one extra load for the week, it doesn't work like that. We all, in this era of electronic e logs, we all play in the same sandbox uh -huh. at this point. Uh -huh. We are all in that same bucket. It's just like watching a NASCAR race. One driver's car to another driver's car is not that different. What makes the difference is who's behind the wheel. And they're ultimately their pit crew. So we're the pit crew back in El Paso. They're ultimately the professional behind the wheel. And it's getting as much out of that fuel economy as you possibly can. So let's talk about this. What is the department that Anthony most likely was getting coached to talk to in order to... Oh, it, it would have been a partnership between driver services and his fleet manager. Because the fleet managers are extremely mm -hmm. competitive about their drivers having an opportunity at that. The fleet managers have a fiduciary or financial interest in your success, both in terms of your fuel economy, but what your weekly paycheck is. They're viewed how we judge a good flight fleet manager from a bad fleet manager is A, their on-time percentage, mm -hmm. and then B, the financial markers of their drivers. So mm -hmm. if I'm a fleet okay. manager and I have 40 drivers, I'm viewed, the fleet manager next to me are literally are measured of whose drivers are more successful. And that's both financially as well as them mm -hmm. getting their home time when they're supposed to get their home time and the utilization of the equipment. So your fleet manager has a financial interest in you being successful. Their, their entire bonus structure is set up around their driver's success. The second piece of that then is working to driver services. And that driver services department is always available to you. And they're working on everything from safety, fleet econ uh, fuel economy, mm -hmm. and your long-term career goals. You may want to become a mentor down the road or uh, get into the owner operator game, or you may determine, Hey, five years from now, I'd like to be a fleet manager, or maybe I want to get into, get into management. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times that driver services department is going to be working on both short-term and long-term goals with you to help you reach those goals. I like that. I like that. And actually working with them and doing what they are advising. That's part of what, produces a professional driver. Yeah, and, and there's uh, a lot of people with CDLs and former MVT driving experience through our ranks. Mm -hmm. So our owner was one of the drivers when he started the company with five drivers and mm -hmm. five trucks. Um, we have a lot of people, VP level, director level, um, in the safety department, most of our road testers literally drove for us. Mm -hmm. um, so we are really big about trying to hire from within for those positions before we open it up to the general public. Because that driving experience is extremely valuable. If you can say, I've seen it, I've done it, I've yeah. been there. It's one thing to read things from a textbook. It's another thing to get that experience off the road and into the company, into those office positions, because it helps us immensely. Love it. Love it. Well, Kayla, I think we should go ahead and go to commercial because what we want to do is go over some hot divisions. We have plenty of jobs open, but we got three very, very hot divisions um, this week. Let's broad across the um, in playing field, all across the geography here. So, Kayla, let's go ahead and go to commercial. Hello, everybody. I'm DeAnthony Davis. I'm a truck driver from Cleveland, Texas. 
I've been driving for three and a half years now. I recently saw a podcast with Rig on Wheels on YouTube. I gave them a call. They, they was fast. They was efficient. They helped me out. I didn't really want to be over the road, so they got me a good regional job. And, uh, hey, you should give them a call. Welcome back. Welcome back. Okay, so let's do what division did you want to do first? Uh, let's start with 130. We'll go in chronological order. <laughs> okay. Division 130, uh, really biggest part of this division is length of haul. Direct customer freight, lots of drop and hook. There's going to be at least one length of haul during the week that's going to be about 1,500, 1,800 miles. So that's where the miles start to rack up pretty quick. Average drivers making about sixteen twenty a week, and when I say average driver, I'm not talking about the top ten percent, the bottom ten percent. Literally, if you work a full week, ninety percent of individuals are going to be within a hundred dollars of this amount. So, uh, average week's about sixteen twenty. Um, a lot of drop and hook opportunities. We generally uh, we're hiring out of the market to Phoenix, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Las Cruces, New Mexico, Dallas, Texas, San Antonio. Uh, so there's opportunities there where you're out 10 to 14, home two to three. We got to hire within 75 miles of those places. And one of the things you'll look on that map that you see on the screen there makes it look like you go to the northeast. I want to be real clear about what our version of is the nor of the northeast is. We don't go to New York City. We don't go to New England. If you see one of our trucks going to New England, either someone's going to visit family and we've worked out a special arrangement for them. Or someone's stolen the truck because there should not be one of our trucks up in Maine. Uh, with that said, it's a really nice division. Like I, I was saying, a lot of direct customer freight. Uh, this is one of the divisions that uh, the customers on this particular division have been very steady for us, even during the quote unquote freight recession. This division's continued to stay consistent at that 1620 mark. If you look at that on a yearly basis, and it helps if I do that in advance instead of at the last minute. But that generally would bring you out to about $85,000 a year. So really good opportunities on Division 130. Uh, Kayla, can you pull up Division 410? This is one of my favorite divisions. If, if you've ever lived in the Southeast, you kind of want to stay close to home. This is mm -hmm. a really nice regional division. We hire out of the Nashville marketplace for this at this moment. In Nashville, you're never going to be more than a day away from the house. So God forbid something goes wrong, you're going to be close to home when that happens. With that said, our folks are getting weekly home time, averaging $1,650 a week, generally going to be in that eighty-five dollars to $87,000 range. There's also productivity bonuses with this. So as an example, uh, if you run 10,000 miles for the month, which if you run for a full month, you're going to hit that. And you don't have any tickets, any accidents, any late deliveries or late times getting back into the truck once your home time's done. We add an extra two cents to all your miles retroactively that you ran. Mm -hmm. If you hit 12,000 miles in the month, which is very realistic, you're going to you're going to get a total of five cents added to all your miles versus your base pay. Uh, so it ends up paying about 90 to 95 thousand dollars, which if you live in Nashville, there's a lot of trucking jobs out there that are going to pay you 50 to 70 thousand a year. Nashville's expensive. Nashville's gotten a very pricey post-COVID as far as rent and mortgage payments and everything else. This is one of those jobs that you're going to get home every week. You're going to be in that ninety dollars to $95,000 range, going to be very consistent. And just like all other divisions, you don't have to get any endorsements. There's no touch, right? You're not a lumper. The key is, is you're that professional behind the wheel that understands customer service and ultimately getting to the customer on time. That is your value proposition. Tends to be a very popular division. We could use six to seven people on this division over the next couple of weeks here. So a lot of opportunities. Uh, so be sure to apply for that position. That would be division 410. So when you talk to your recruiter, trust me, they're going to know based off of where you live, what divisions are available. But with that said, if you want to skip to the head of the line, just say division 410, one of Camille's fine recruiters mm -hmm. will know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, let's do division 430. This is the stress-free division is what I'd call this. So mm -hmm. if you live in Jacksonville, you've had recruiters trying to send you up I-95 constantly to D.C. and New York and Baltimore, or they've tried to send you to Atlanta where you could experience the fun that is driving on 285 around Atlanta in an 18-wheeler. 
This division runs along I-10. You're going to go Jacksonville to Houston to Laredo and then back to Jacksonville. You're going to be out about four and a half days at a time to five days. You're going to be home. You're going to rest up. You're going to get your 34-hour reset, and you're going to do it all over again. This is a fun division to where you don't have a lot of the worries that you have running anywhere else in the country. Once every three years, a hurricane may slow you up, and you don't want to drive into a hurricane, but you're not going to have a massive winter storm. You're not going to have snow. You're never going to have to chain up your tires. Uh, and I-10, as long as you pre-plan around Houston, which is where you will hit traffic, I've seen it and I know you have. Yeah. If you pre-plan around that, the only spot that you end up hitting real traffic is going to be Houston. Outside of that, in between Houston and Jacksonville, some of the easiest running area in the country, there's a popular division where we gain two to three people for this division a week. I still have about 20 openings out of this market right now. Obviously, we're not going to try and bring on 20 drivers at once for this. Uh, but with that said, we're always looking for two to three a week to join our team and be a co-worker with us for Division 430. Okay, good. Now, I have something I want to say. You said never be a day away from the house when we talked about 410. Yeah. Can you explain that again? Yeah, so from a geography standpoint, you're never really going that far out. You're hitting the southern Great Lake states uh -huh. and you are hitting uh, southeast regional. So sometimes life happens. So uh -huh. let's say that um, a kid fell and broke his arm or God forbid your uh, medical emergency happened. It could be that your wife's pregnant and could be having a baby at any moment. Right. Sometimes life doesn't fit a perfect plan and your ability to drop everything and get back home becomes really, really important. That's where a lot of these shorter regional divisions have a lot of value. Mm -hmm. Hopefully the day comes where you don't use it. But every once in a while, that opportunity to get home when you need to get home becomes really important. I think about it. You know, my wife and I, we have five kids. We've been right. through the delivery thing. You may have a due date, but that may get sped up by a couple of days. <laughs> Or it may or, get pushed out a week. That's what I was about to say. And or so, two. Yeah. And so that ability to, hey, my wife's gone into labor. I got to get home. That ability to do that is why uh, Division 410 and a division we've also talked about, 329, become really important to drivers. Because that ability to get home as a driver is hard to find with a lot of jobs. If you're at a traditional OTR company where you're out four to five weeks at a time, it just may not be feasible. Mm -hmm. That just may not be for you. On the flip side of it, a lot of local jobs where you're home every night don't pay really great. Right. Um, and so that's the thing is you have the burden of being a breadwinner on a house, be it male or female. If you're the breadwinner in the house, you've got to make money. But when life happens, you also have to be available to be home. Yeah, absolutely. OK, I just wanted more clarification on uh, what that meant. But that is really good because you are very close to home and emergencies definitely do happen yep and speaking of i'll throw that out there we won't talk about it this week but next week we'll probably be talking about division 329 again which would be the texas version of that oh. where if you live in texas you're able to be never more mm -hmm. than a day from the house so that's something to tune in for next week again though if we didn't talk about any of the markets that you particularly live in we hire from a bunch of other places mm -hmm. portland salt lake city phoenix denver el paso albuquerque yes. Uh, San Antonio, Laredo, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Nashville, Memphis, Louisville, Kentucky, St. Louis, and Jacksonville, just to name a few. And then, of course, Camille has about 40 other clients. And so one of the nice things here, even though I'm a little bit biased and I'm going to have you join Team MVT, <laughs> uh, the nice thing here that you're going to be able to do is talk to Camille's recruiters, and you're going to talk about what your wants, your needs are, and what your background is, and they're going to look MVT may be the right option. I'm hoping that it is, but you may not be a good uh -huh. fit for MVT. You may be a good fit for XYZ trucking. So the nice thing, instead of sitting on a phone and having to make 40 separate phone calls, trying to figure out what's going to be the best opportunity uh -huh. for you, is you call Camille's team and they act as your agent. Think of yourself as a sports star. You're a person that hits 40 home runs a year. You want to go someplace, but you also don't want to be on a carousel where you're a free agent every single year. You want to find your long-term home. That's where Team mm -hmm. Rig on Wheels comes in play. And so definitely give us a call at 281-968-3100, 281-968-3100, or go directly to the website and complete an Intella app, which is under the driver application um, tab. 
So you can do either one and one of the recruiters will definitely give you a call back ASAP. So um, we are going to go to commercial, come back and then see if we have any uh, questions and then answer all of those questions. All right, thanks. Be right back. All right, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Okay, Kayla, any good questions for us today? Well, what yes, good um, questions, I guess? The first one I have is kind of a two-part question. Um, what type of routes are available and are drivers expected to handle specific types of freight? Um, when they ask what type of routes are So what we do is engineered lanes. Oh. So again, this is kind of vague because I'm not quite sure where that particular individual lives, but we do engineered lanes. And mm -hmm. so the, the, one of the key pieces of an engineered lane is uh, dedicated did not, does not necessarily mean bad or good. Mm -hmm. Dedicated could be all range of the spectrum, mm -hmm. but dedicated a lot of times is viewed as being good and the devil's in the details. Let's say you don't like the company or the carrier mm -hmm. or the shipper. That dedicated is no longer such a good deal just because it says dedicated. What we focus on are specific running lanes, point A to point B to point C to point D back to A, as an example. The advantage of that is it makes your pay really, really consistent. You know what your good weeks are going to be and your bad weeks are going to be because you're running those same patterns over and over again. For us, it lets us service a customer with a much higher level of customer service than a lot of carriers that do irregular routes. Because it is the same, same DCs we see day in and day out multiple times a day. So the customers that we work with, like as an example, on Division 430, about 60% of the freight, there's going to be lows. They know us. They've seen our trucks. They're not surprised to see us. They most likely know a lot of our drivers on a first-name basis at this point. Um, and it allows us that relationship with the shipper, the driver, and us. It's quite unique. Mm -hmm. um, the nice thing is, though, is if you go, you know, I don't like this one customer. Or I didn't have a good experience here. We have divisions that have 18 different customers. That's one of 18 customers you're going to see. It leads to consistency, similar uh, good running areas. And part of what we talked about earlier with MPG is as you gain familiarity with specific lanes, you also get more efficient at right. driving those specific lanes, utilizing the hills, the winds, the, the time of day that you go against when traffic's going. Mm -hmm. You can get very efficient if you're always running the same lane over and over and over again. Uh, so it's engineered lanes. What was the second part of that question, Kayla? Uh, what are the specific types of freight that drivers so, are expected to handle? Yeah, we, we do dry van. So it's all 100% dry van. It's all no touch. It's general commodities. We do have big customers that we work with, um, such as General Electric, which seems to be booming for us out of Texas right now. Um, a lot of Lowe's, Starbucks, Ikea, Anheuser-Busch, Tesla, uh, Tesla um, for Division 230 as an example. And so we have very uh, a concentrated, I'd say our top 20 customers make up about 80% of our freight. Mm -hmm. And of those 20 customers, most of them, we've had relationships going on 10, 15 plus years. So there's no hazmat, nothing's going to make you glow in the dark, as Pearson says. Now, I, I will always tell somebody, and we've had this conversation mm -hmm. too, about investing in your long-term career. We don't require any of those things. But mm -hmm. as an example, uh, we recently had a customer pop up with kind of a weird request. 
needed five drivers from El Paso to take loads up to Canada, up to uh, uh, Calgary and Edmonton. And they needed, of course, passports to get into Canada. Mm -hmm. the, because the individuals that we needed had those, they end up, it's not one of our open lanes. We go to our fleet. And before we open stuff up to new drivers, we always look within our fleet and go, how can we promote you up? So part of it is coming in the office in that career path. But part of it is, hey, we have a, what we call an arbitrage opportunity, meaning there's better than average returns from the opportunity. Right. So as an example, we had five professional drivers on our fleet. Hey, we've had this dedicated opportunity come up. It's with this established customers. It's going to pay you an extra 20 cents a mile because you have a passport. Would you like to do this? And they jumped at the opportunity. So I will say, if you do get a hazmat endorsement, if you do have a passport, um, it doesn't mean that we're going to require it from you and that you're not going to make a living with us. But it does mean it opens up to better and bigger opportunities when they become available. And we will always do that. When you join MVT, you will get first dibs. If you're a professional that has a uh, good on time percentage and extremely reliable, we want to promote you up so that you have the best opportunities available. But as a new driver joining the company, you do not need hazmat. You do not need any endorsements. We're not going to do tri triples and doubles. We don't do tanker. It's all general commodity, dry van, no touch freight. And that's exactly what I always say. You know, when you're a driver, make sure you're marketable. Be bulletproof. Make sure you're marketable. And what that means is have everything. First of all, you never know if you move outside of MVTs, how you're in the area and you need to get another job that requires you to have it, or if MVT has a special customer that does need something, whether it's ongoing or one special time, and you need to have those things. You're a truck driver, so have everything that what a truck driver would need be marketable. And, you just never know. And I, I'll throw this out there from an advice standpoint, depending on the market that you live in. So as an example, if you live in Houston, having a TWIC card has value. You may not use that TWIC card, but that TWIC card, there's always going to be stuff coming out of the port of Houston mm -hmm. and it's your backup plan. You always have that option available to you. That TWIC card is extremely valuable if you live out of Houston. If you live out of El Paso, Having a passport, having the ability to reap the benefits of NAFTA yeah. and the freight coming out of Laredo and El Paso that may end up going all the way north to Canada, we aren't going to require. And you may never use it, but it is a backup plan. and gives you a lot of versatility in your career. In other markets, it's that hazmat endorsement and having that opportunity. So if you live in Dallas, Fort Worth, the TWIT card's not a bad thing to have and, and neither is that passport. But you having the ability to move hazmat freight yeah. gives a lot of options to you out of the DFW area just because there's a sheer concentration of volume of freight that moves in and out of that market. So it's one of those things to think of. And I, I, I advise it not only of drivers, but I, I, if it was an accountant or a lawyer or a banker, mm -hmm. what are you going to do if the worst happens in yeah. your respective field that you chose, your profession? Let's just say business went down in the industry 20 percent. How would you survive that? And it's a good exercise for anybody in any occupation, but I would recommend it to all drivers. If things went really, really bad and the unforeseen happened, we had one of those moments when COVID hit and we had three to four really ugly months during yes. COVID. That was hard. 9-11, trucking was not fun. This was all the way back in 2001, but for, mm -hmm. for about four to five months, trucking was not yeah. a lot of fun. So having that backup plan is just good from an overall life mm -hmm. standpoint. You always want to be able to expand, pivot, or however it is you are, whatever word that you want to say, but you want to be able to be as marketable as possible. There's no harm in it. Nope. The only thing it can do is make you better. So who wants to fight being better? Well, there are some. No, oh, yeah. Yeah. But, but they don't do very well. They, they don't. Don't be closed minded in being better and doing better. Um, what's the next question, Kayla? But that was a really good question. Whoever asked that question, that was excellent. That was an excellent question. My next question is, um, what kind of experience are you looking for for Division 130? Yeah. So uh, we're looking for at least six months of verifiable tractor trailer in the last year or one year in the last three. Um, 
we generally are looking at a safe, stable work history. So it is somebody that's had four fewer jobs in the last three years. It is somebody that's not had a termination, as an example, for late deliveries. Mm -hmm. um, it is not somebody that has three accidents or what's common in our industry that we have to avoid. That's not necessarily a written qualification at most places, but it's a creature of habit. So as an example, if every two years you get a speeding ticket at 10 miles per hour and like clockwork over the last six years, you've had that same speeding event happen. Mm -hmm. Companies get very leery because you get the jackhammer or the strong arm, or I'm going to throw a trucker on the billboard that will look at that and, and literally eat you alive because they're going, boy, you knew this happened every two years. You saw it coming. Yeah. And so by safe and stable work history, I may have 20 available trucks. And if I have 40 candidates, I'm going, hey, who are the best 20 drivers out of those 40s? It does mean that every once in a while I have to go, hey, I can't put you in a truck this week. Mm -hmm. I have to push you back a week. There are candidates ahead of you. We'd still like to work together. It's just not now. But if someone has a, has a safe, safe, stable work history, um, and in particular, a really stable work history where they can show longevity there, there's a lot of motivation to make us co-workers. That's a great question. Another really good questions today, guys. Anything else, Kayla? We do have a shout out from LinkedIn from Sage Outcast who says, hey, now, great show. <laughs> love that thank you all righty so i think that what we should do is go to commercial if you can um uh, put uh joe on that shows the how big the condo is and show all of the appliances that can be put into the blue beast that would be amazing to show that because we were just, I was actually talking to a driver at my son's graduation this weekend, and he was talking about how small his trucking company had him, the truck that he had. Um, he actually lives up north, so it's outside of MVT's area, but he was complaining, complaining about how small it was, and he was a tall human. You do not want to be a mime in your truck where you're constantly trying to feel your way yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. And he was talking about that. So, yeah. Um, but if you can go ahead and throw that on for us, Kayla, that would be amazing. At Messiah Valley Transportation, every driver is behind the wheel of a late model International LT, a truck that takes comfort, convenience, and safety to a whole new level. Join us as we explore the impressive features of this powerhouse on wheels. The open road is full of surprises, and sometimes that includes unexpected encounters with wildlife. But worry not. The International LT has you covered. The front end protection guard offers an extra layer of defense, protecting you from animal strikes. Drive with confidence, knowing that you're shielded from the unexpected. We all know how important it is to keep our batteries charged. And our International LTs have your back. The Cummins X15 is equipped with an auto start feature, ensuring that your batteries are automatically recharged when they run low on volts. It's a seamless process that keeps you powered up and ready to hit the road. Disc brakes and an engine brake provide reliable and safe stopping power when you need it most. You can have peace of mind knowing that you're in control. Safety is at the forefront of what we do. Our international LTs are equipped with top of the line safety features to ensure your well-being while out on the road. These tractors are equipped with Bendix fusion protection, collision mitigation, and lane departure warning. Achieving good fuel efficiency deserves recognition. With the international LT, your efforts don't go unnoticed. When you consistently achieve impressive miles per gallon, the International LT rewards you with increased speed. It's a little extra motivation to keep you pushing for better fuel economy. After a long drive, you're ready for a well-deserved break. With the International LT, you can enjoy your rest period in absolute comfort. Thanks to its auxiliary power unit, you can keep the driver's cabin heated or cooled just the way you like it. No matter the weather outside, you'll always find your sweet spot within our International LT. The International LT understands that comfort extends beyond driving. It's a space where you can truly feel at home. I'm a big guy and I have room to move around in here. With plenty of room to spare, the International LT accommodates even the tallest drivers. And there's ample storage for all your clothes, cooking essentials, and tools, making life on the road even more convenient. Speaking of cooking, bring along your appliances and don't sacrifice any luxuries thanks to all of our International LTs being equipped with built-in inverters. Dry your hair, 
make a smoothie, or play a game, all from the comfort of your truck. We take pride in our well-maintained fleet. And if by chance you do come across something wrong on your truck, you're never far from help, thanks to our valuable relationship with Pinsky. With more than 750 brick and mortar Pinsky shops nationwide, their expert team is always ready to assist you. From routine maintenance to unexpected repairs, they'll get you taken care of and back on the road in no time. And there you have it. Just a few things about this late model international LT that make MBT the place to be. That, uh, that relationship with Penske is probably the less glamorous part of that ad right there, but it's the most important part of it. Yeah. The nice thing with our running lanes and those engineered lanes we talked about in response to the question is Penske is literally all along those running lanes. So as an example, a lot of times we'll get a subunit. So let's say something happens and you can have an assembly line of brand new trucks. One out of a hundred is going to have something wrong with it. It's just, it's going to, uh -huh. trucks are so unbelievably complex at this point. So as an example, yeah. let's say that you're going from Dallas to Denver and all of a sudden your air conditioning is not working, uh -huh. you can't get it to work. You can stop at the Penske location in Amarillo. They'll be expecting you. And if they can't get it repaired in less than six hours, they will give you a subunit. So you'll continue on to Denver, deliver the load, go on to El Paso. And as you make your way back up to Dallas for that next spot in the running lane, your truck will be there waiting for you after it's been fixed and set up for you. So we can keep you rolling even when something bad and I can't say it. Yeah. Inevitably. That's the word. Thank you. Happens. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be able to keep you going. And that's a big relationship with Penske. They stay on top of it. They do all of our preventative maintenance. Um, we have a really close working relationship between the ge ge geography that they have along our running lanes, as well as them being set up at all of our terminals. It gives us a lot of versatility to keep you running as a driver, keep our uh, equipment well maintained. And then the uh, chance that anything goes wrong, there's a backup plan to the backup plan to make sure that you and the load are still able to continue forward. So are you telling me driver Peter will not have to be in the cab in 115 degree weather? Oh, your, your comfort becomes important because part of part of your success is being comfortable in what you're mm -hmm. doing. And so it's not just does it have the power under the hood with the coming Cummins engine to get you there, but specifically you got to be able to sleep. You have to be well rested. You have to be alert. You have to be comfortable. You can't do that if you're dealing with heat stroke in the summer or freezing in the winter time. And so we want you to be comfortable when you're going down the road or when you're waiting. So we have great APU units on the back of all the trucks, which allows you the versatility that Joe was showing you as far as all the appliances yeah. go. But it also keeps you comfortable. In particular, in Dallas, as an example, you can't idle legally. Um, so you can either yeah. go spend $40 a night hooking up to idle air at Flying J, mm -hmm. or you can rely on your APU to keep that unit going and keep you cool during the summertime, which we're coming up on that time of the year. You can feel the oppressiveness of the heat starting here in Houston with the humidity. You want to have a functional AC in your truck. If you don't, yeah. it is a long day, and you can't possibly get a full night's sleep and function correctly the next day. A long day and a long night. It, it doesn't allow you to be safe on the road when you don't get sleep. And on top of that, like we talked about here, as far as getting better MVGs and offering customer service, if you've ever slept at, in a hundred degree heat, the next day you're miserable. You're not going to give very good customer service because you're going to be miserable. So let me tell you a small story or a short story. And you tell me what would have happened differently if I was a truck driver, what should have happened differently. So I was taking Patrice Camille back to her friend's house in Jacksonville, Texas yesterday. And because we were all in the back roads and everything and then dodging floodwaters and you driving down this one road for 10 miles. And because we in Timbuktu, there was a road closure because of the floodwaters. But of course, they didn't notify Google and all of that type of stuff because they don't have to. It's not a major anything that means i had to turn around and go back the other way 10 miles well that means my gps is no longer operating offline now because i've turned around and everything it says sos there's no signal and so i'm just driving 10 miles and driving another just driving 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 hopefully i get a signal 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 
So I'm burning gas, which if I'm in a truck, I'm burning diesel. And eventually it uh, pops up and it was a place that I was supposed to turn. And so I did turn. Then I get to some more water. And coming from Houston, you know, you see water, turn around, don't drown. That's the signs everywhere. So anybody that doesn't live in Houston, you don't know that saying, that's the saying, turn around, don't drown. Because you never know how deep the water is. Your eyes are deceptive. Well, utility company truck was going through. And so it was okay for my SUV to go through. But then another half mile or click up the road, it was some more deep water. They was trying to go through and realized I couldn't. So they turned back around. And so they was telling me how to get around without my GPS. Now, mind you, I yeah. So we, a two hour and 45 minute trip took four hours and 30 minutes. However, what should have happened if I was Camille, the truck driver? Yeah. So there, there's a couple of advantages that we didn't talk about with these engineered lanes. Um, a, we, we mainly rely on satellites. So very rarely are we relying on that cell phone signal, which can be very inconsistent, even on interstates. There's stretches. If you go up to I-10 and then come up onto where 30 starts, mm -hmm. from about Fort Stockton to you start getting up until Midland, Odessa, cell phone coverage is spotty at best. Mm -hmm. You're on an interstate system, but that cell phone signal, depending on your carrier and at different points, is going yeah. to be spotty. Uh, the second piece of that equation, though, is we utilize the eyes on the ground. So as an example, um, we may not get a feed saying, hey, this road is closed or there's been a major accident. That may be late information by the time that we get it. However, we also utilize the fact that we're really running almost a convoy. We have multiple trucks mm. going in that same exact direction. So you will rarely see us going from Dallas to El Paso, as an example. Okay. But we'll have 50 to 70 drivers a day going from El Paso up to Dallas because of the engineered lanes that we run. Well, let's say that Camille stops and sees there's a major accident and it's closed the act and closed the interstate. You can't move forward. You're literally going to be stuck. And you've been told by a DOT officer, oh, it's going to be several hours. Mm -hmm. That's information that the 50 drivers behind you could really utilize that information. That is really accurate information. Mm -hmm. So we will utilize that information for those 50 other people behind you of, hey, this is coming up. Find alternative routes. We'll often work to, hey, this is your alternative route. There's a long line of communication that takes place with that, that because of those engineered lanes, we're able to do that. Still means that somebody came upon it first. Right. But when we have one driver dealing with an issue, we don't want to have 50 drivers dealing with that exact same issue. So there's the advantage of that. Two, because of those engineered lanes, you know, when you go out to Jacksonville out there in East Texas, mm -hmm. uh, you're kind of in the boonies. Nothing yeah. wrong with East Texas. It's a beautiful area, but you're <laughs> yeah. out in the boonies. Um, so part of the nice thing with us is where our customers are located before we move load one into a distribution center. We physically have seen it. We know what surrounds uh -huh. it. We know the roads that have surrounded it because it gets into the safety element for us as a fleet of knowing what challenges are we dealing with. Right. So as an example, I, I worked for a company previously, a flatbed carrier no longer exists, uh, was sold off. But this flatbed carrier, there was a particular customer that wanted to move move. Um, load moved out of a distribution center. The problem was, is the way to get out of that was about an 18% grade slope that was quite long mm. that comes out of there. You were gonna have load securement issues possible. And there were some clues. I mean, they went through carriers like water. Um, that would have been information that would have been nice to know because we wouldn't have bid on the business. Mm. And it ultimately caused a lot of issues and we weren't the first carrier and we probably weren't the last carrier. Yeah. So part of us, when we pick up new businesses, we want to know the distribution center, the setup, the challenges of going in and out of there. Is it going to be a traffic issue? Mm -hmm. What's the weather consistently like, depending on the time of the year? There's a lot of factors that really go into pricing out large scale business in this industry. It's one of the disadvantages of the spot market. If you rely on the spot market, there's a lot of unknowns yes. when you go to pick up that freight. Uh, and just because you have on paper what it weighs and what trailer it goes into, that's not the whole story. And so that's why you want a company that has customer freight that they've done work with. It's why we talked about the value of the fact 
that a lot of these customers we've had 10, 15 plus mm -hmm. years. We're familiar with the distribution centers, where they go, who works there, uh, formalities that take place there. Understanding all those things so you have fewer of the unknowns when you do come upon the unknown and having a plan and communication system makes a really big difference to a driver's enjoyment of the job and ultimately their long-term safety record. Yeah. I, I As I was driving and coming across all these obstacles and I knew I was going to eventually get to where I, I'm, I'm going, I, I don't get nervous or anything behind that. A car or get road rage or anything like that. I give people get road rage with me, but I don't get it with anybody else. Like, but I was just thinking, how would drivers deal with these situations? Because the, the, obviously they do. The big thing right now, there, there's two keys, key pieces here though that become really important. We have in cap communication or mm -hmm. in cap navigation that is specific to a truck. But it's not 100%. No, no in-cab navigation ever is. The valuable proposition for a driver of being that professional beyond what we've talked about earlier as far as endorsements is it's getting lost today. Being able to read a map is really important. Yeah. And there's a lot of drivers. It, it is scary to me how many times that you open up an atlas and you might as well be talking to them in Lithuanian. Yeah. They have no clue no what clue. you're talking about. Yeah, it's very important to, to know how to read a map. I, I will say that. Yeah, that's very important to know because when not if but when the 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 actual uh cell cell phone and everything went out i still had the map up so i was able to figure out a few things yep. so that that was good um but what i definitely want to talk about and something that uh pearson and i brought up earlier in the fact that the background diversity of each driver was different that won the car. That brings up the fact of the diversity of the road, faces of the road 2024 calendar. So no driver is the same that is on the road. And as promised, <laughs> June is in the calendar, which we have already manifested that it's going to be a great start of the rest of the year. So it is uh, part of our Pride uh, Month. And then you also have the other holidays. Um, and Flag Day is our first holiday that is coming up on the 14th. And you have that. And then on the back, you have our Rig on Wheels quote that says inclusivity is our fuel, diversity is our engine, and unity is our destination. That you have, to, oh, in each, on each page, you have your QR code that takes you to the application. So if you're a driver, you need the application, you just take your camera and you'll be able to do that. And then it also uh, has each, of the icons for the social media. Uh, on my end here, you were going to ask, uh, did I have anything I want to share? I, I just like the artwork in here. And uh, I appreciate the fact that as we start trying to attract a younger demographic, the next generation into our industry, part of the importance is them envisioning themselves in yeah. our industry. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the reasons back in the 70s why Sandy Colfax was such an important baseball player for a lot of Jewish Americans. Mm -hmm. That was the first time of seeing somebody, hey, there's another Jew that's in Major yeah. League Baseball and being able to see that. It's why Roberto Clemente was so huge for the Hispanic population or why you see a lot of that is you can't really dream or envision something if you don't see anybody that looks like you yes. doing it. Yeah. And so it's one of those really important parts of this is we try to attract. We are not we are a melting pot of a country and being able to envision and see other people like yourself that are actually doing the job yeah. becomes really, really important. And so it's one of the things that uh, we see the percentage of women in our industry can do increase. It's a great opportunity. This is one of the unique industries that you don't need to have a college degree. Now, I've met a lot of drivers that actually have uh, college degrees yes. and master's degrees even. Yes. Uh, with that said, though, this is one of those opportunities that it's a good paying occupation. And more than anything else, it's one of the most important jobs that we have in the country. And so somebody being able to look and envision themselves doing the job becomes very important as we move on to the next 10, 15 years from now. 
It actually, it, and I'm not just saying this, I'm being serious. It is the most important job because you can't have anything brought to you if it wasn't brought on the truck. Life would be radically different. Yes. Radically different. The apparatuses that say somebody's mother's life at the hospital had to be brought by the truck driver. Yep. So that's just the way that is. So on that note, now that I have said that, because I definitely um, believe that this has come to an end and I know everybody is going to cry about it. Calm down. We, <laughs> we filmed this before a live studio audience, so they're pretty upset. Yeah, they're crying. They're definitely crying out there. Um, but we want everybody to be safe. If you have any questions, anything you want to see on the show, and of course, um, want to uh, apply and talk to a recruiter, give us a call at 281-968-3100, 281-968-3100. Not just for the three jobs that you saw here, but if any of um, any other jobs that you might want, give us a call because MBT does have other openings other than just these. So, 281-968-3100 or go directly to the website at rigonwheels.com and click on driver application uh, tab at the top and fill in the Intella app. Other than that, be safe. See you next Tuesday at 3 p.m.